Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give of all praise to Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it, Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Family is the Most High is blessing us with more knowledge and understanding. We're getting a clearer view of history and the tactics of the church and the people who support the church's actions. Now, on the videos that I've been doing, you'll get guys that'll people that'll come in and they'll say certain things, and they're always trying to accuse you of what their church is guilty of. If you say, you know, that you just say certain things about their church and the all the churches are pretty much complicit with lying about history and hiding information, they'll say you're painting, you know, the church with a broad brush. It wasn't all the churches. It wasn't all the Christians. It wasn't all the Catholics. Okay. Now that's that again, they don't deal with the information. They don't deal with their history. They try to like, well, it wasn't everyone. So therefore it doesn't matter. But you know, it's like, even like when you go to court, it's not like you've got to give like a, you got to get a hundred percent of the information correct. You can convict on circumstantial evidence. You can look and see what makes sense. And you can do the same thing when you're looking at history. You can look at history and look at what makes sense. Okay? And they're always it's always they're always trying to belittle the actions of their of their heroes, of their churches. See the most, and and that's the whole religion. The whole religion is just set up to forgive them of the things that they've done. But then they try to guilt trip us into always believing like it's all, if you want to be saved, you need to live like this and you need to do this and you need to live like this. You need to follow these, these 10 commandments. And But they are guilty of not following any of them. How are you going to tell me that, uh, you know, thou shalt not kill when you have just, you made laws that um, made it legal for you to murder anyone who disagreed with you? How do you, you know, talk about thou shalt not covet, you know, other, another man's wife or his possessions when that's exactly what you did when you got here? You coveted the Aborigines lands, their resources, and you took them. How can you talk about thou shalt not steal when that's all that you've been doing? How can you talk about you should not bear false witness when all your whole inquisition was about bearing false witness? All someone had to do was make an accusation, and the person was guilty. You see what I'm saying? Like, it just, it just, all, all of the commandments that you talk about that you would make us try to follow, you don't follow. And then you write a history that is fake. And when the Most High has now awakened us and we're bringing this information out, you say things like, Oh, well, you're just painting a broad brush. It wasn't everyone. You need to forgive. You're being hateful. When your whole history <clears throat> is nothing but hate for the Israelites. You've shown no compassion, no love for the Israelites whatsoever. You just justified your actions the whole time. And you still are justifying your actions today. You see what I'm saying? So it's like that. And, and you guys were the ones who set up like everything, like, you know, all white, you know, schools and all white drinking fountains, you know, all black drinking fountains. You sit in the back of the bus. If you're black, if you got one drop of black blood in you, you're black. If you can't, if you're black, you can't get a loan for this. You can't live here. If you're black, you're you have the curse of Canaan and it's okay for us to enslave you. It's, it's okay for us to diminish you and make you not even be a human. And this is why the Most High is telling certain people to get out of Babylon. How can the Babylonians teach you about Babylon? 
when they've done nothing but hide their history. They've hi- they're, they're, they're in the process still of hiding their actions. So it's really easy to see who the Catholics are. The Catholics will, you know, they will, they will defend their doctrine to the end. They will defend 80 or 66 books till the end. They will defend the fact that we are not the Israelites, that we have no history. They will defend that to the end. They will, def- they will defend Christmas, Easter, Sunday worship, all that. They will defend that till the end because that is their doctrine. Now, like I said before, there might be certain aspects that one group won't follow and another group will follow and they'll pit them against each other just to make it seem like they're not all Confederate. They can't let the whole world know that, you know, they're all Confederate against one group of people. So they got to make it seem like they're going against each other when in, react- in actuality and in reality, they are working together against Israel. All of them work against us being the people of the book. All of them. That's one, you know, common, you know, uh, dogma that they all have. They will not admit that we are the Israelites. They will not bring up that kind of history. Okay, now we're going to get into a book here real quick just to kind of show you that like the history has been written, you know, to hide all of their dirt. And they'll, as long as you're pushing their Catholic doctrine, they will overlook all of the horrible and heinous things that you've done. You see what I'm saying? That's all part of their blessing. They're, they got a blessing too, and their blessing was pretty much, A, if you're down with us, we'll take care of you. We'll protect you. If you're working to you know, push our turn, protect our turn, protect us being on top, we will look away from many of your trespasses. Okay, this book is called Mexico, It's Peasants and It's Priests. Okay, this is from 1856. Like I said, it doesn't matter what we read because the Most High is going to show information. He's going to reveal information. You know, so that's the beautiful thing with this awakening. We're not stuck just reading 66 books or 80 books. And see, that's and that was a, when the guy from the camp tried to come in and start running his mouth. It's like, hey, you got to understand, man. You see, this is not a, I'm not a Constantine Christian. Okay. I don't, I know what you know and more. See, that's the difference. You're used to talking to a Constantine Christian who doesn't read the Bible. Okay. I read the scriptures as well as the, uh, the, the Apocrypha, but we've read many other books. And see, we, our puzzle has way more pieces than yours. So when you want to come in and attack, I said, hey, that kind of stuff with one verse here, one verse there, you know, to push your 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 dogma will work great against a Constantine Christian. OK, because they don't know the scriptures. But I know exactly where you're going to go. I know what you're going to talk about. It's nothing new because it's the same redundancy all the time. We 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 grew or when we came into the truth, we watched the camps. We studied to show ourselves approved. But then the Most High took us to another level, like he said he was going to do, do like he was going to do in Second Edges fourteen. And see, I haven't heard any other groups talking about that, talking about explaining Second Edges fourteen. Go towards the end, you'll see. There's a group of books that are for everyone to read, the worthy and the unworthy. There's your Bible, but he's going to give more books to the wise. No one explains that because, see, that goes against your Catholic doctrine. So check this part out. They're going to show you right here how these people are well aware that the Spanish had inherited just about everything they got from the Moors. Okay? We've got chapter 14 right here. It goes, look towards the middle there. Well, I had read with eagerness the history of the conquest and of the adventures of the noble conquistador. See, they... Try to, they try to raise them up. You know what I'm saying? But we know that the conquistadors were res- responsible for raping, robbing, murdering, you know, stealing. But they're going to tell how they were noble conquistadors, right? Okay. Now you're going to find out why. Like, they know they know the history. They know all the horrible things that they've done. But they're going to do, go out of their way to try to justify it. Or just, you know, oh, hey, man, you know, everybody does it. 
You hear that a lot too. Oh man, everyone goes around stealing other people's lands. No, they don't. Everyone goes around rape, robbing, and murdering. No, they don't. Oh man, no, hey man, it wasn't all of them. There were some good. There was, there was a couple of good conquistadors. So let's just ignore all the others, other things that they've done. See, that's, that's what they do. So when I when I see that, you know, and like I said, people want to always want to say it's all about color. Oh, it's a, all white people, all black people. Man, there are so called black people that are defending the Catholic Church just as hard as all other nations. That's why it's not just about your skin color. Okay, it is about your spirit. And it's also about where your allegiance lies. Okay? So I got people that even come on the TikTok and you know they 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 man, darker than I am. But they are trying their best to defend Christian Constantine Christianity, you know, with tooth and nail. Oh man, you know, it wasn't all the churches. Oh man, come on, it wasn't all the priests that were raping those little girls and little boys. Oh man, it wasn't it wasn't all the pastors, you know, that were um, you know, have having extramarital affair, whatever else, you know. It wasn't it wasn't all of them. You see what I'm saying? Like like that, but instead of dealing with the issue, there'll be oh well, mistakes were made, but hey man, Jesus came, he died on the cross. You know, I nailed my sins to the cross of Jesus, so therefore, all that raping, robbing, and murdering that the key conquistadors did, all the Christians did, hey man, God, God, you know, he covered it with the blood of Christ. Oh, okay, man, if that's what you want to believe. Most High is coming back to destroy someone. He's destroying some people. Read in the scriptures who that is and who fits that. Okay? So again, I had read with eagerness the history of the conquest and of the adventures of the noble conquistador. Not a shadow of a doubt had then crossed my mind in regard to the truth of all that had been so elegantly written. Beautiful composition had supplied the place of evidence. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it sounds good, man. Don't worry about the evidence. Just, just say it. It's, you know, that's what's, it was just a beautiful composition. That's why when people go to church and you'll come home and you'll say, Hey, Hey man, what'd you learn at church today? I, I don't know. I didn't really learn anything, but the, the mass was so beautiful or the pastor gave such a great sermon. Well, what did you learn? I, I, I don't remember, but it was beautiful. That's all I can remember because that's all that it's about a beautiful composition. Okay. So a beautiful composition has supplied the place of evidence and that practice of writing romances of history, which the Spaniards had inherited from the Moors. Again, they've, they've inherited everything from the Moors, okay? Had completely captivated me as it had thousands of others. The aspect of the valley is when they were look, overlooking the valley of Mexico, okay? When they first came and saw it. Okay, the aspect of the valley was all that my fancy had painted it. The sun was in the right quarter to produce the greatest possible effect. The unnumbered pools of surface water that abound in the valley appeared at the distance like so many lake uh, lakelets supplied by crystal fountains as each one reflected okay, the bright sun from its mirror-like surface. These all were enclosed in the richest setting of nature's green. You know? You know, they, they were really breaking down and showing you, like, how beautiful this place was. The, the, you know, the floating gardens. It was like they were comparing it to Venice. You know, people getting rowed around and, and the gondolas and everything else, how beautiful it was. Yeah, it was beautiful. So y'all showed up. You know, but, hey, that was all part of the curses. And see, that's the whole thing. I, hey, man, that, that was the most high. It wasn't you. You didn't have the power to do these things. It was the most high bringing the curses on his people. And if you actually would have just admit that, things would go better for you. But you're going to go with the lies till the end. You're going to go with the 500 conquistadors took down a million people. And now Jesus died on a cross so that we can be all raptured up and all the descendants and everyone who's part of the church can be raptured up. And that's not that's not happening. Let's see here. Let's skip on down here. Let's see. I don't want to start here. Uh, and down towards the bottom, it says, In the very city where Cortez tortured Guatemozin was a son of Cortez, who inherited the spoils of his father's atrocities. And that's what's happened here. Many people don't realize that they have inherited the spoils 
of their father's atrocities. You want to believe that, you know, you're not going to have to pay. Well, I wasn't here for slavery or I wasn't here, you know, when these atrocities happened. Yes, but you guys have been inheriting the spoils of the atrocities. And it might not be just a, a home or money. You have inherited a society that was built on the atrocities. That's what you guys don't get and you won't you don't want to admit. That's why the Most High is tearing down all of society, not just in America, worldwide. That's why, you know, everything has been turned upside down, not just in America, worldwide, because it was a worldwide takedown of the Israelites. And it's going to be a worldwide takedown of the other nations. OK, so again, in this very city where Cortez tortured Guatemozin was a son of Cortez who inherited the spoils of his father's atrocities put to the torture by one of the vice kings while the children's children of the conquistadors paid for the wealth they inherited and the terrible penalties okay inflicted upon them by the buccaneers that ravaged their coast for 200 years have not the sins of the fathers been visited upon the children see they are well aware that the sins of the fathers will be visited on the children they're well aware of these things But see, they tell you in church that that's not the case. Oh, you never inherit the sins of your fathers. Hey, they, they, that doesn't, God doesn't do that. Yes, he does. He did that to us. And the Spanish here are telling you the same thing has happened to them. And it's going to happen again to the people that have now kept Israel down into slavery again. You're going to inherit the atrocities of your fathers. The Most High is fair and just. It says the Aztecs, their empire and their city have long since disappeared. Their crimes and the despotism, which they exercised over the tribes they had conquered, are all forgotten in the terrible catastrophe that extinguished their national existence. So the things that they were doing, Mosai brought another nation from afar to destroy them. He destroyed us because we messed up. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's not, you don't waste your time hating the ones that the Most High brought over here. We brought it on ourselves by our actions. Now, the problem was you took it too far and you still are taking, like when, once our, we had finished up serving our punishment, you've continued with the punishment. That is part of the issue. Okay. Says 300 years of servitude and the uh, indiscriminate mass of Indian serfs has blotted out every feeling of nationality. A few vagabonds among them still claim royal descent, okay? And by virtue of their blood or their imposture, uh, pretend to exercise in obscure villages, okay? An undefined jurisdiction over Indians as oppressed as themselves, okay? Now we're good with that. Now let's skip on down. This is important, okay? This is very important. This shows you what's going on even today. Because see, this is how the Catholics and the Christians work together. This is how they've um, excused their actions in the past. Which gives them a false sense of what's going to happen in their future. They think that because they've forgiven each other. And that they've hidden their history. That they're not going to have to pay. That's why when I bring out information and they say, oh, you're doing the same thing by saying all church is this and you're painting people with a broad brush. I said, OK, listen, big difference. I bring receipts to the things that I say. I show you the history of what your churches are guilty of. All you do is make false accusations against me or against the Hebrew Israelites. Oh, you guys are just as bad as a church. You're hateful. You're, you're bigots. You're this, you're that. Just like the church. Excuse me? I said, so hold on. Have, have we done anything to keep you from being able to enjoy your life? No. We don't have any power for that. Have we been able to write laws that kept you at the bottom? No. Have we hidden your history? No. Have we taken away your identity? No. We have no power for any of that. Have we written books that lie about absolutely everything? No. Have we, uh, you know, deceived the whole world and have them going and doing uh, worship to different gods? No. 
but you want to say that we're doing exactly the same things as a church. Did we enslave people? No. Did we rape people? No. But you're going to say that we've done exactly the same things as a church. These are your tactics that you've used. You don't say, you say like, you know what, man, we made mistakes because this is where, this is the source of your power. So you're not going to be able to say, well, that was in the past and we're just going to leave it there. No, because look, you and your churches enjoy prestige. They have money. They have standing. They have, you know, the whole world listens to them. But it's all based on a foundation of lies. So therefore, you can't just ignore your history because everything that you are today, you got from raping, robbing, murdering, and stealing. And you've elevated yourself to a position where people listen to what you say and don't even like question anything you say because they believe the stuff you say because they don't know your history. They believe the lies that you tell about love and this and that, but they don't know your history or they don't want to know your history. Okay, now look at the bottom. The great difference between what is recorded of the North American Indian and the Aztec is only less to the any difference in themselves than to the character of the historians who have written of them. See, and that's it. The conqueror gets to write the history. Doesn't mean it's true. It just means it's, this is the information that they are willing to release. Okay? It says the northern writers were not carried away by the romance of Indian life. They were matter-of-fact men, and they drew only matter-of-fact pictures. Spanish historians and all early Spanish writers upon New Spain, except the two brigands, Cortez and Diaz, were priests. And again, remember, they were um, <clears throat> influenced by the Moors and the way that they wrote their history. Okay? Now it says, with them, truth was not an essential part of history. Excuse me? Yes, with the priests, truth isn't really an essential part of history. Isn't that, ain't that the truth? Because truth is the essential part of their religion. Truth is not important. It's all about feeling good. Okay? That's what it's all about. It's all about feeling good. That's like, it's all. Hey, 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 man, it's all about love. Hey, man, where's the love? Well, that's not truth because you haven't been about love. Yeah, but it sounds good. It's all about love. We're, I mean, you guys are you guys are showing hate. Wait, haven't you shown hate? Well, no, man, it's all about love. Don't worry. Don't talk about our history. Don't talk about the things that we've done. Don't bring that up. You see what I'm saying? Because truth is not in them. Truth is not important. Just like it says right here. With them, truth was not an essential part of history. And you got people today that are still trying to defend this madness. By the law of all countries, the conquistadors had outlawed themselves by levying unlicensed war. They went to war with the Aztecs and they did not have a license to do so. So all countries, right? It says, by the law of all countries, the conquistadors had outlawed themselves by levying unlicensed war. But see, since it's Psalms 83... All of the nations are going to look, are going to turn the other way. All the other nations are going to, yeah, man, I know that it was illegal what they did, but we got this Psalms 83 contract, and that takes precedence over everything. You see what I'm saying? This is, so that's why you guys keep coming in and say, well, it wasn't all of them. Yeah, it was all of them. All of the churches are all Confederate. All of the governments, they're all Confederate. This is Psalms 83 right here. Look at that again. By the law of all countries, the conquistadors had outlawed themselves by levying unlicensed war. But let's continue. Why didn't they talk about that? But as they bore a painting of the Virgin Mary on one of their standards and the cross on the other, it would be impiety to place their conduct in its true light. Hey man, we can't talk about that. We can't we can't talk about their, their actions in, 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 in true light. We need to romanticize this. We need to just all turn the other way because they got a cross 
on one banner and the Virgin Mary on another. So before you try to sit there and, you know, say that we're all the same and we're doing exactly the same thing as a church, that is a damn lie. These books are telling you that the whole world turned the other cheek, turned away, turned a blind eye to the actions of the conquistadors because they had a banner with the Virgin Mary on it, okay? And they had a banner with a cross on it because they were doing Christ's or Jesus's work, God's work. So therefore the rules don't apply. Is that not like the same kinds of things you see today? Why fear for my life? Even though he didn't have a gun or he was 12 years old and, or I had all these weapons and everything else. And I had a dog. <clears throat> I had to shoot him because I feared for my life. Well, we're going to turn the other cheek because, you know, you're doing the service of Psalms 83. That has been this whole, the whole society has been doing that. Turning the other cheek and looking the other way. Because as long as you're supporting Psalms 83, it's cool. There's no, there's no consequences for you. But check this out. Las Casas was an exception and endured persecution for speaking the truth. He had powerful enemies, was all that his apologists dare say. Yeah, who were these enemies? The church, because he was exposing things that they were doing. Okay? Because he speaks great truths. And if we add to this the seven soul, sevenfold censorship already described, my reader will agree with me that it is absurd to place confidence in records over which the Inquisition exercised a surveillance. You're not going to get any truth when the Inquisition was in power. You're only going to get what they approved. And they didn't approve much. So when people try to sit here and come and talk about the things that we're talking about, and then they try to uh, accuse us of doing exactly the same things, that's a lie. We did not do the same things that you churches have done. Yes, you are part of Babylonian, a Babylonian system. You are supporting Babylon. You are willing to look away from all the horrible things that they've done because you're part of the system. That's why you'll come in and say, well, it wasn't all the churches. It's not all the priests. You're, you're just as hateful. You've done just as bad because they can't deal with the truth. The priests didn't deal with the truth. The churches don't deal with the truth. The parishioners don't deal with the truth. And that's why the Most High is telling you to get out of Babylon. Because Babylon is nothing but a bunch of lies. It doesn't matter what, the, what you read. You're going to see the truth and everything. The Most High has the truth everywhere. It's all around you in your daily walk. It's all around you in everything and all of your interactions with people. Okay, you can see you can see real quick who's part of Babylonian system because they're really quick to, you know, look away from the truth. They're quick to look away from things that, you know, are uncomfortable. They're willing to allow Israel to be destroyed and not have any rights and, that, and no recourse. And, you know, they, and that's OK, because they're all part of Psalms 83. See, that's how they that's how they justify it. And they're going to blame you for the things that they've done. So as soon as you start to see those kinds of things, you, you know what's up. All right? All praise is most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. 